Yeah, what you're talking about, uh, I'm sure you know this and have heard about this, is called uh, the negativity bias factor. And so we are all prone to negativity more than we are positivity. (laughs) So like I, I like to say, it's like we already have an uphill battle just because we were born, right? So to be a positive person, we're already on this like uphill battle. And so, you know, you say 80% of our thoughts are negative. Well, that's the negativity bias uh, factor of it. And it's not the event, but the story that we tell ourselves. So thoughts control our feelings, which control our actions. And so how do we let go of these stories that we are telling ourselves? Sure. So I actually use an acronym I like to call NEST, N-E-S-T. And N stands for notice. So many of us are actually on autopilot. Like you mentioned before, we have this negativity bias. And I believe, you know, thousands of years ago when we had to hunt and gather for food, it was important for us to actually notice and remember the negative aspects of a situation because it depended, our life depended on it. But we no longer live in that reality, right? So between stimulus and response, we actually have a gap. And in that space, We get to decide. We get to decide the story we create. We get to decide if we come from a place of love, a place of fear, whether or not it's an empowering story or a disempowering story. So I invite you, when you notice in that gap that you're starting to have a negative thought, just flick it off. You know, I have a cancel word and my cancel word is squash. So as soon as I notice myself having that negative word, I literally visualize myself squashing that thought. And the more fun you make it, the more joyful you make it, you'll remember to do it. So that's the end is to really notice your thoughts. Notice those 60,000 thoughts you're having every day (laughs) and don't be on all in pilot. The other one, the E in NEST stands for truly experience the emotions and the sensations in our bodies. I really believe that our mind doesn't always tell the truth. And just to give you an example, before I got on this show with you, my my heart was racing, my stomach was fluttering, my throat was a little dry. And I could have labeled those sensations excitement, or I could have labeled those sensations Mm. as nervousness, but it's me who labels those sensations. So when an event happens, I invite people to truly feel those sensations in their body and then let it go. So Dr. Jill Bolte-Taylor wrote a book called My Stroke of Insight, and she was actually a Harvard neuroscientist who was actually able to cure herself from traumatic brain injury. But what really stood out for me, Amy, was the 90-second rule. And in the 90 seconds, when an event happens, either good or bad, it literally takes us only 90 seconds to process that event through our Mm -hmm. physiology. After that 90 seconds is up, it's up to us. Do we truly just let it go or do we create this negative story? So that's the E, is to truly experience the emotions and then let it go. S stands for scratch the record. And a lot of this I learned from Tony Robbins many, many years ago when I did the fire walk experience with him. I did it twice, (laughs) actually. It was so much fun. But basically our thoughts run like the grooves on a record and they play over and over again. Mm. So we need to scratch the record so we can't keep playing Mm. the same story over and over again. And some of these methods you may have heard, um, you know, when you start to have that negative story or that negative thought, you know, cancel, cancel. For me, it's squash. You know, come up with your own funny cancel word. The other one is to... um, This is the one I actually learned from Tony, to do something so zany and crazy that you can't tell the same story. So Mm. when my husband and I start to get into an argument, and if you've ever gotten into an argument with someone, sometimes you forget what you're arguing about, but you know you have to prove your point. Well, when we get into this rut, we've agreed beforehand that we will reach over and grab each other by the nose. So of course, what happens? You start laughing. It's like (laughs) the stupidest, silliest things, right? So you get out of that rut of having to argue and prove your point. So I invite people. There are probably certain stories in your life and certain patterns that you know that you have. So beforehand, come up with something zany or crazy, the crazier, the better, that when you fall into that rut, you remember to do. So that's scratch the record. And T stands for tender, loving care. I believe that so many of us feel isolated and I don't believe it's related to COVID. I feel, I believe that so many of us feel isolated because we've become disconnected from ourselves and from the creator or the God of our understanding. So we become disconnected from ourselves because we've abandoned ourselves physically, emotionally, Mm -hmm. spiritually, and spiritually doesn't have to be religious. It's just that sense of being with yourself, that sense Mm -hmm. of oneness. Um, So I think it's so important for us 
especially now, to really just reconnect, spend time with ourselves. Because when we connect in with ourselves, we know who we are and the outer world can't shake us. <laughs>